Hello guys, uh, Free here. Welcome to the video today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, GitHub Copilot. It's going to be a demo of this product. It's so fascinating. Uh, it's caused a lot of buzz in the industry for uh, being able to help with developer productivity uh, using AI to write code and just speed up the whole development process. You know, the traditional way of finding code snippets is going out to uh, Stack Overflow and searching on Google. Uh, this seems to help with developers being able to find uh, code snippets uh, natively within the IDE without having to go out to different search engines for that. So very fascinating. Uh, if you want to follow along or get started with this, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting product. Uh, from It's powered by OpenAI, but I believe it's managed by Microsoft. So the partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI is what uh, facilitates this being available in Visual Studio Code. As far as I know, it's available just in Visual Studio Code for now. Uh, if you have other IDEs, it might not be uh, in there. So the co-pilot in GitHub co-pilot is really the emphasis. So it helps with being your co-pilot. If you're writing code, you have that co-pilot beside you, uh, helping you, making things easier for you. That's basically what it is. So uh, what you need is just sign up uh, and get into the list. It might take a while to get into this list. I, I did... Uh, I was on the list for a while. I actually got my open, my GPT-3 uh, access before I even got this co-pilot uh, taken care of. So join the waitlist if you haven't. Now, once you're on the waitlist, once it's ready, you'll get an email. Click on that email. It will bring you to a sign-up page. You can go ahead and do the whole nine years of sign-up. Now, once you sign up, it's going to require you to uh, come in. There will be a link like this uh, where you can take that link and click on install. And this would uh, install a uh, GitHub Copilot on your Visual Studio Code. So it's going to require you to have Visual Studio Code. Of course, if you're using Mac or if you're using Windows, it doesn't matter. You can install it on either of those systems. So just click on install for this and uh, it will take you through the process. It will authenticate into GitHub and the installation, a couple of clicks, you can get, uh, get that taken care of. Now, once you install, this is what your system will look like. So you come in here uh, in Visual Studio Code, uh, we are all installed and uh, this is what it shows up. There's nothing fancy to it uh, more than this. I was expecting this uh, holy grail, kumbaya kind of moment of zen or something just happening, a euphoric moment. I, I just, I, I couldn't tell you what I was imagining would happen once I got the installation just because I waited so long for it. But uh, I can tell you it's just installed and done. It's installed, right? That's basically what it is. Now you can see the extension. So if you go down, let's go here into extensions. I have a couple of extensions. By the way, I don't use Visual Studio Code that much, to be honest. I know folks out there might say, oh, you don't use Visual Studio Code. Yeah, I really, I, I use PyCharm and I've used um, other IDEs. Um, I just haven't had a lot of things to do with Visual Studio Code, but I can use it if I have to. So uh, this is what the extension looks like. Of the library these are basically installed for me I, I didn't install any of this um but what you see here is a github copilot right so this is the extension that we need if you click on that that's it so that's installed now what do you have to do to use this i'm going to go back into my explorer so i have um, a project that i did uh, some tutorials i did for python available on udemy uh, and these are the courses that i did and the videos are on my channel too as well but i'll, I'll show you how uh, you can now, once this extension is installed, I believe they call it here extensions or packages, extensions. Yeah, they do call it extensions. Once your extension is installed, there's nothing else you have to do, right? You can just come in and create a new file, right? So we're going to create a new file and then we'll call it GitHub Copilot um, Demo. And what you want to do is specify the file uh, type. So if I'm going to be writing Python, I'm going to just do .py. Um, I'm sure there are better ways to specify that uh, here in um, in Visual Studio Code, but I'm just very, very new to it. So now, a blank canvas. So if you imagine yourself being a developer from scratch and you're having to write something, right? right? So let's say we want to write a function. Now we'll just test it out here. We're just doing a testing exercise. I'm going to do a more comprehensive demo maybe later on, but just some testing exercise to give you a, a, a taste of what it looks like. So let's say we want to write a function that uh, checks its prime. It's basic, you know, 101 for writing functions, right? So what do we have to do for that? 
Uh, so let's come in here. We're gonna just type, you know, in Python to write a function is a def, and let's check. Uh, oh, you see, it's already. I didn't do anything. I can promise you that I did not do any single thing. It just started uh, recommending that for me. All right, so I just said check, and it just believed that I want to check if it's it's prime. And the way you're gonna accept this is you can do a tap and it would accept this function. So if I do tap, I'll accept that function. All right. If I don't want that, let's just go down and do another function here. Def, I check if alidrum. Okay, it's suggesting that one for me. Now, again, it's just suggesting things for me. I can change it if I don't want to. If I wanted to, I'll tap it and I'll take that. Uh, but you can see the speed and, and this is the, the selling point behind it for productivity. So check if Polydrum, if I don't want that, uh, and depending on the, piece, the uh, machine you're using, uh, you can do um, for Mac, I believe is uh, option and uh, bracket for Windows, it will be out. And I'll leave a, a link to the shortcuts here. Knowing the shortcuts is really relevant. So let's do option and back. So it changes the function. So if I don't like this implementation, I'll do, I'll just keep doing that. All right, just keep doing that, iterate through that. Let's say this is what I like. Let's assume that that's what I like. Um, I can go ahead now and tap that and take that as my function. All right, so uh, really, really uh, uh, interesting. Let's say we want to check for birthdays, right? So write, a, let's just do write a function to check for users birthday. Um, birthday. All right, now, as I go in, you see I've put it as a comment in the line above. It's already suggesting a function for me below. All right, so it's already suggesting a function. So dev if birthday, uh, so dev if birthday, uh, Monday. Let's let's not take that. Let's take a different one. Let's suggest something else. Well, I guess I cannot suggest that. Let's try this. So let's just take that and then go down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's implemented a function for me. So it's um, kind of interesting. You know, I think for trivia functions, it works, but not just for trivia functions. Let's do write a function to read messages from, um, let's take something that is people don't do a lot. You know, I could say from a REST API, but what about a SOAP API? Let's say you have some from a SOAP service uh, out there. A lot of people don't use this anymore. Can we... Uh, get that right so you see it's already suggesting that for me let's take that enter open file oh i don't know why it's taking files uh so point and point there you go so it, it kind of changes a, a little bit now it's not just looking at files it's importing requests and it's doing stuff i wouldn't say this is the cleanest or most fascinating code i've seen but it's something right it, it, it could give you the prompt that you need to then write that, the function that you want um and then you can go ahead uh, something i found that was interesting too you can say dev uh test check if a polydrum let's so let's check the function above right so we want to check this uh polydrum function here uh, write a test case for it right so now you see as i just wrote the name it's already done the asserts for me, right? So um, is this polydrum? A polydrum is a number that is the same forward and backwards. So that's polydrum, this is not polydrum. So I guess that's a good uh, test. So I have my test case, right? Um, let's say def uh, test check, let's check the prime if uh, prime. Kind of slow so let's do that uh, apparently it's not seeing this function i would imagine you should see this is the spelling correct it's correct so why is it not implementing that let's try uh, out slash out back line suggest suggest all right for some reason it's not uh, sensitive enough okay, there you go Write a function to test a function that checks 
<laughs> that's really what I want. I don't want to write a function that checks if it's prime. I want to write a function that tests if my function is prime. So let's see if it does, if it figures it's Anna. Test check if prime. Does it do it? All right. It's not uh, being sensitive enough. I don't know if my I'm, my lines are too much now and it's confusing. But this this should help with um, with overall productivity. And that's just basically what it is, right? If you think about the typical workflow for this would be, you know, let's say uh, I want to zip a file. Uh, so, you know, I would sit there and I wonder how do you, what's the function or the syntax? Because syntax is usually the, the, the challenge. Uh, if you give me a file name and I want to zip that file, how how do I do that? That will always be, and now I'm off to Google, I'm off to Stack Overflow and all of that. But here you can just say def um, zip file, file name, right? It's imported all of those things for me, I guess. And then let's do uh, uh, So I've given it a file name. It's done all those imports. And these are the shortcuts, by the way. So these are the shortcuts to accept, to move to the next one. So check if file exists. So I guess if you want to zip a file, you have to check if the file exists. So let's take that, go down. What is the code? Yep, let's go. Print file exists. Else, oh, let's go over the back. Let's go back. Else, let's take that. Print file does not exist. Now, if file exists, check if file is zip. Let's take that. If file is zip, let's take it. If not, print file is zip. Else, file is not zip. File is not zip. Then now we need to zip that file. Okay. Uh, let's uh, go back. So again, my goal is to zip a file. So is doing some checks, which is not too bad. Um, let's take this, but I want to change this um, zip file. Let's just do zip file because I've, we can do as many checks as we want. Zipping file. Temporary look directory, temporary directory. All right, it's kind of getting redundant here. Wait, let's go temporary because make temp. Uh, let's go back. Created that. What else is it gonna tell me to do? You see, it's not as trivial, right? It's uh, I, my goal is to zip a file, and it's done some interesting things, but I've still not zipped that file. So go here. So zip. Let's do z zip zip file. I don't want that zip file equals to <laughs> okay. I don't think that's how you zip a file in uh, in in Python. Now I can go to Stack Overflow to get the syntax, but you can see that you know it's a copilot. It's gonna get you there, but it's not gonna solve uh, every single challenge that you have, right? It might give you certain things that you need and libraries that you need and basic functions. At least to my experience, just playing with this. But I don't know if it's going to solve every single thing because my option here is give me a file name and I'm going to zip that file, right? It should be a trivial thing to do. Or I would say give me a directory. I'm going to look through and zip that uh, uh, that directory. So uh, I don't know if this is uh, has solved my problem. So, But anyways, you, you get the idea of how you can play with this in Python. I'm sure maybe with JavaScript or a different language, the experience might be different. So let's go back and I'll show one more thing here. Uh, this is just the first time I'm playing with this. Uh, one thing to be aware of is this documentation. I haven't read through all of this, uh, but uh, the piece to be aware of are these shortcuts, right? So tap to accept your suggestion, escape to dismiss the suggestion uh, option, and this to change uh, a suggestion. And so these are the shortcuts that you use to just skip through things as you go. Uh, pretty fascinating. I think it's a good start. And you might say, but what is Copilot anyways? You know, Copilot was trained on GitHub that has thousands and thousands, or, 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 or thousands, millions, or even billions of lines of code. 
So the train set uh, is uh, built on the Codex model uh, by OpenAI uh, for coding. And so it helps generate the uh, syntax for different programming languages. And so, you know, it knows how to write all of this based on this training that is done from the GitHub uh, code library that people have um, uploaded to GitHub. So pretty fascinating. Hopefully this was helpful. First take at this, uh, some is helpful in some ways, uh, challenges somewhere else. Uh, the more I play with it, I'll get more familiar with it, understand the use cases where it works and where it probably doesn't work. And I'll, of course, share that with you guys. Uh, if you need access, like I mentioned, just go to GitHub Copilot, get in line. And uh, I think the team is uh, opening that up more and more. Uh, you can write even more sophisticated, uh, uh, complex codes than I did, right? Uh, so I just basically was playing with it here. Uh, so just check it out and uh, see where it works for you. Share your thoughts, share your comments below. As always, uh, this has been Fru, uh, Tech with Fru here. You have been very awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next demo.